folks. Um, 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 uh, another one in our um, actually quite extensive list of, of seminars now in applied analytics, uh, Chang Gao, to talk uh, about the Scottish Safe Haven Network and the Federation Framework, I believe. So if, if, take it away and uh, let's find out what that's all about. Uh, have you start by sharing my screen? Um, so first of all, a, a bit introduction of myself. My name is Chang Gao. Uh, I'm working as a researcher for this organization called Health Informatics Center. We're one of the five safe havens uh, in Scotland. And in the past years, I have been leading this internal safe haven projects, trying to bring up a, a federation model within a Scottish safe haven uh, ourselves and uh, uh, trying to really streamline activities of different safe havens to, to promote uh, us working better as a network. So the, this coming talk is basically a, a report of what I have learned during this process and uh, what, what, what we're trying to achieve in Scotland. So let's start with the most basic, what is Safe Haven? So um, uh, here provided is uh, from this paper published in uh, 2015. So the definition is given as Safe Haven is a repository it is repository uh, for useful but potential sensitive data. It is also a governance and informatics system that is uh, tailored to fit for purpose to host the data to be accessed by legitimate user to conduct their work or research. If you talk about safe haven in a, a healthcare setting, uh, this image illustrates what is safe haven well. Basically, NHS daily running will generate a lot of data. Those data will be data linkaged into Safe Haven environment. And Safe Haven will have this infrastructure to host uh, different software solutions and the data. And they will provide the uh, data as a project data format to the researcher to access um, behind a, a firewall to protect the uh, privacy of the patients. So. Um, Safe Haven is not really a, a new concept. Uh, it has been developed and evolved in the past years. Uh, uh, really different, different, different regions, different countries have quite different definitions of Safe Haven, even within the same country. For instance, the U United Kingdom, uh, the definition of Safe Haven uh, in Scotland are quite different with the definition of Safe Haven in England. Um, so my colleague, actually um, he provided a review of Safe Haven or so-called trusted research environment based on the interview of 20 UK national and international Safe Havens. So if you want uh, a more international landscape of, of Safe Haven and how the health data is linked and provided for research purpose, um, this paper is a good paper for you to, uh, to, 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 to read. Um, for this talk, um, our perspective is going to mainly focus on safe haven in Scotland, uh, all the Scottish safe havens and all the, the terms and the concepts. So uh, Scottish Federated Network of Safe Havens. Uh, in Scotland, we have a network of five safe havens, uh, which is supported by the Scottish government. We have one national uh, safe haven, which is called Aegis. And we have four regional safe havens, uh, basically covering each of those regions. So. Uh, each of the safe haven is a collaboration between uh, research and development nodes of the NHS Scotland and uh, a medical school, medical school in the uh, uh, regional university. Um, so from this table is basically summarize uh, um, the, the safe haven collaborations. So Aegis is part of Public Health of Scotland, uh, PHS. It's uh, Commission's Edinburgh Parallel Computing Center, which is EPCC. It is part of University of Edinburgh to provide the national safe haven. And the Grampian uh, Data Safe Haven, also called DASH, is a collaborative uh, relationship between the University of Aberdeen and NHS Grampian. It is a safe haven for a Grampian region, Aberdeen City, and Aberdeenshire. Uh, Glasgow Safe Haven and Lodian Safe Haven. Lodian Safe Haven is also, um, called data log. So they used to be uh, two separate organizations and during the pandemic, they sort of merged into uh, one safe haven. Um, these two safe havens are led by the NHS. It's covering the west of Scotland, Edinburgh and South East region uh, of Scotland. 
it is working in collaboration with Glasgow University and Edinburgh University. Um, and the last but not the least is uh, Health Informatics Centre uh, in, in University of Dundee. It is a safe haven covering uh, Tayside region and the five. So if you want more detailed information of, of why safe haven established, um, what's the principle uh, for safe haven and how we in general functions as, as a server, uh, this is a good document to read. It's called Caters for Safe Havens in Scotland. It's a government document to really um, provide a guidance in uh, in Scottish safe haven. And also that I have to point people to this paper, which is the, the, the green paper of the HDI UK. It's talking about the trusted research environment, which covers quite a lot of the concepts that we use in, in Scotland, uh, in safe haven region. Um, there is another organization, except for the five uh, Scottish safe havens, there was another organization that I have to mention here, which is called Research Data Scotland. It is an initiative that has been set up by Scottish government to, stream, uh, to streamline and support access to linked health and administrative data sets across the country. So um, Research Data Scotland has a, a, a a wider coverage of, of in terms of the data type that they want to cover. They want to cover not only the health data, but also administrative data. Um, and it is part of the Research Data Scotland's aim to, uh, to, to bring up the, uh, a network of the Scottish State Haven to make us work more collaboratively and uh, uh, working more like a, a single body. And also we have a website of the uh, chief scientist office here. Uh, this is this is uh, this is the this is the Scottish government that uh, mainly uh, supporting the functionality of, of safe haven. So, to summarise how a Scottish safe haven looks like, this image do a good job. So basically, if you encounter a Scottish safe haven. Uh, this is what you should expect in. We have three separate uh, networks. The first network is a data repository network. This is a network that we host all the original data, the identifiable, identifiable data. Um, most of safe havens use NHS network as the data repository network, but we do see some safe havens, for instance, Aegis or, um, or Dash, uh, Grampian safe haven, they have some of the identifiable data in the uh, service network. But those part of the uh, network is totally separate with the daily running of the service network. So it is still quite, quite a secure, uh, secure, secure network. It's, it's, not, it's using the same network, but it's totally separated from the, from the daily running of the safe haven task. And then we got a second uh, network called the service network. This is a network that the safe haven staff we mainly use to conduct their daily daily task. So in terms of like the cohort discovery, cohort building, data linkage and everything. And then we have the third network, which is an analytical platform network. This is the network we host all the project data, which is uh, de-identified data uh, provided for the research project to be accessed by the researcher uh, through, uh, uh, through the internet access. So the researcher have access to uh, safe haven applications uh, after data governance approval. The uh, safe haven staff will link and de-identify the data and make the data available in the analytical platforms for the researcher to analyze. Um, so each of the safe havens report a rule-based segregation of the team. Spe uh, speci uh, specifying uh, those who with or without access to identifiable data. Within each of the safe haven, only a handful of people uh, can access the NHS network and can see the identifiable data. They do so to limit, really limit the risk of, of the identifiable data being, being leaked or, or compromised. Um, so from this table, uh, a summary of safe haven service could be First of all, it is a data repository or, or data management, data repository management, that's part of Safe Haven's job. And then analytical platforms. Um, so another point to raise here is not all Safe Haven, they support their own analytical platforms. 
Uh, HIC, we, we do have our own infrastructure team to support an analytical platform based on the university network of University of Dundee. Um, Aegis, they outsourced their analytical platforms to EPCC. So it's part of the University of Edinburgh. Uh, they sort of run the analytic platforms independently for Aegis. Um, and also Glasgow, uh, Glasgow Safe Haven, they, they're relying on the uh, uh, bio data center in Glasgow, Glasgow University. So different, haven, different safe havens, they run their analytical platforms quite differently. Uh, and also uh, all the safe havens, they have the responsibility of supporting the researcher to conduct their research. So what is a typical workflow for a safe haven? So the very first step will be data discovery and research feasibility, which this is the stage that researcher will approach safe haven and saying, I have the idea of doing this research, but I'm not sure uh, I have enough uh, data, I have enough patients in the cohort for me to, to conduct the research. Can you please find it out for me? And the safe haven will collect the, the, the selecting criterion of the cohort and then go back and do a cohort building um, and then report back to the researcher saying, okay, based on your requirements, we have this amount of patients available if you want to conduct the research with us. Um, and then the researcher will be, oh, this is too, too many or, or too few. I need to relax uh, the selecting criterion a little bit. Can you just do another search? So this is really a, a back and forth flagging process uh, for uh, between the safe haven staff and the researcher to really find the, the perfect cohort and the perfect size for, for the researcher. Once the cohort is, is defined, then a, a indexing and linkage is happened. If, uh, health or if other health or non-health data need to be linked, uh, with the identified cohort. And then step three is a cohort building stage in which, uh, of, of course, by, the, by this stage, uh, the governance has been uh, checked and also the funding has been available. So cohort building stage will be a more detailed discussion between the safe haven and the researcher uh, in terms of what data to provide, what, the, what, what data table to provide, and also within this table, which column do you need? What kind of information you want? Uh, to be provided for your cohort. Once this is done, the data will be transformed into a de-identified format as a project data and being hosted in the analytical platforms for the researchers to analysis. Uh, and then the up by the end of the project, the, the, all the original data, including the project data, and also the, the data generated from the analysis will be archived within the safe haven itself. So this is just the general pipeline of working a uh, project in Safe Haven. There are exceptional uh, uh, circumstances. For instance, um, if a prepared project data would not be uh, hosted in analytical platforms, or the project data actually contains some, some sort of identifiable information, for those kind of uh, exceptional circumstances, uh, Safe Haven does support projects like that, but we do require the, the project to go through uh, quite a bespoke governance approach to, to get the government uh, governance checked. In terms of the IG work, the inform, uh, information governance, um, it's it's really difficult to, to, to summary what, what Safe Haven do uh, in terms of in common. The common principle is the same, which is the five saves. Safe people, safe projects, safe settings, safe data, safe output. But, um, the, the IG work really varies from safe haven to safe haven. And even within the same safe haven, uh, if the project's different, the, the, the IG work will be quite, quite different. So uh, the IG work normally is quite bespoke to, to the specific project. But each of the safe haven has already established a, a committee, a governance committee that will streamline a standard project. So if your, if your project is categorized as one of the standard projects, then uh, your governance uh, paperwork will be quite quick because it will just uh, go through this governance uh, committee uh, to get approved uh, in once. So those are the names of the, the governance committee of different safe havens. Um, there's one thing that I need to mention here is each safe haven actually have quite different definition of what is a standard project. So for Dash, for Grampian Safe Haven, uh, a standard project means a local researcher using local data. 
So you have to be based on a local institution and uh, your research should have been only using Guangpian data. And only in that case, you can go through NMPAC to get your governance approved. And uh, other safe havens, for instance, Glasgow, Hick, uh, safe haven, they believe a, a standard project will be the identified project, analyzed by approved academic researcher, and the funding body is a peer reviewed research grant. Um, those kind of projects can be covered by a blanket governance approval. So um, it's, 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 it's really important for the researcher to uh, start or initialize your conversation with Safe Haven on the governance as soon as possible, because if your governance uh, requirements is, is more than the standard, uh, then the, the governance process can take quite, quite a long time and that could potentially co cause quite a lot of delay of your projects. So it's absolutely essential for, for the researchers to, uh, to, to, be, to be mindful of that and start the governance application as soon as possible. Again, this is two of the uh, papers that uh, really talks about the governance uh, work uh, in details um, as well. So it, it's worth a read. Uh, data linkage and identification. Um, again, in Scotland, uh, we're not doing anything special. Again, it's, it's quite a standard uh, separation of indexer and linker approach. So uh, indexer is the one who hosts all the identifiers. Uh, it will generate this identity map and it will send the identity map to the linker. The linker will be the one who hosts all the real data, but don't have the identifiers. Uh, and the linker will based on the identity map, linking all the data together, and then provide that to the analytical platforms to be accessed by the researcher. In terms of data, uh, data identification, again, it's a quite, uh, uh, quite, quite, quite a straightforward topic. Um, straightforward in terms of it's been, it's it's been covered by a lot of the talks in this, uh, in this, in this seminar. Um, so basically, in terms of different, different different data, we, we deal with it differently. Here are some examples of, of how we can de-identify the data. If it's date of birth, we can either change it into the first of that month, or we can change it to age at, or we can just remove it if it's not considered as necessary for the analysis. Postcode can be replaced by a SIMD rank or, or, or dep uh, deprivation score. Um, our biometrics data could be changed into range so those kind of uh, standard procedure um, will be taking place for your for your, for your project. So the de-identification again can be quite uh, bespoke to your project. If your project need uh, some sort of identifiable data available to you, as long as you got the governance paperwork ticked, then the the de-identification can be bespoke to your requirements. Um, Kai Sidin, this is quite a specific Scottish uh, uh, Scottish uh, safe haven activity that is basically happening, only happening in Scotland. First of all, what is Kai? A Kai is a patient identifier which uh, contains a unique number, the patient's date of birth and their sex. Kai number are normally allocated at birth or on the first contact with NHS in Scotland. So when you link uh, NHS data with non-health data, or even health data, but doesn't really have Chi numbers. Um, the indexing team will need to use a public, uh, pub publicistic matching against the population spy, which contains all the personal identifiers for all the individuals in Scotland who has ever been in contact with NHS. So this ma this matching sort of matching source data sets to the uh, population spy is known as Chi CD. In Scotland, we have mainly two teams providing a national level Kai CDN. The first one is National Record Scotland indexing team. And the second one is Public Health Scotland Kai linkage team, which is also called Chile. So when a research project data only requires NHS data, then the indexing of the Kai CDN will be carried out by Chile only. Um, this all sounds quite straightforward, but when it comes to individuals uh, individual safe haven, the way that they do Kai CD uh, varies from one to one. For Aegis, which is national safe haven, and the loading safe haven, which is Dash. Oh, sorry, not Dash, loading safe haven. Um, the, 
they, they rely on these two national organizations to do kite sitting for them. Dash Safe Haven, they do kite sitting themselves, but the requirements are quite specific. They require the, the cohort size to be lower than 500, and uh, the patient has to be a, a, a local, local Grampian patient, and also specific identifiers uh, available for them to do the kite sitting. Um, for Hake and uh, Glasgow Safe Haven, uh, we have quite developed kaiseidin uh, 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 kaiseidin uh, algorithms, and we do a lot of kaiseidin uh, for for our projects ourselves. And for HIC, we have provided kaiseidin as a service to the uh, local governors uh, for to link the non health data to health data. Too much. And uh, when it comes to data, for data format in the analytical platforms, um, it's again, can be whatever that re researcher requests, but because there are only certain type of analysis software package available in the uh, platform, uh, normally researchers request uh, the data form to be, uh, to be those specific format to be able to analyze the by the package. Um, there is one thing that worth mentioning is Hake has been launching this hybrid cloud-based uh, analytical platform service, which is based on uh, AWS service, cloud service. So this scalable analytical platforms, <coughs> pardon me, will include <coughs> the capa uh, capacity for software development, machine learning, and artificial intelligence development. So this will really uh, make the uh, software package available in the safe haven much, much more diverse and more robust. Uh, the researcher will got uh, quite a lot of choice themselves. When it comes to um, project archive, as I said, uh, researchers will absolutely not permit it to export any sort of data from the analytical platform. So the archive has to take place in safe haven side or, and also the analytical platform side. Uh, the archive for a project can vary from five years to 30 years. It's really depending on the regulations, the researchers and the founders requirements. Um, all the research, all the, re all the safe havens report, they not only archive the research project data, but also archive the identified data um, in the NHS network as well just uh, so it's easier for them to rebuild the cohort for the researcher if it's needed. So after talking about all those paperwork, infrastructure, uh, governance, what, what, what is really, why, why, why do we need to do this? What is really the, the reason behind all of this? Is, is the data, is the NHS data that, that we, are trying to, we are trying to provide to the researcher. So in Scotland, we are quite fortunate because we have a single healthcare provider uh, and we have a world leading national uh, health linked data sets from uh, birth to death. So uh, as you can see here, uh, those data are really gold and we are trying to facilitate the researcher to dig in the gold in a much uh, safe and a secure way, both to the researcher and to the patient. So in Scotland, we have national level NHS data, regional level NHS data, and research data. And in the, in the, in the next slides, I will talk about them uh, one by one. So first of all, the national level NHS data. So those are not, definitely not all, but some examples of the national level NHS data. We have the uh, occupations, we have maternity, we have cancer registration, so Public Health of Scotland is in charge of collecting the national level NHS and administrative data. Those data sets can be accessed in the national safe haven. Each, uh, each NHS health board uh, across the Scotland will provide a regular updates of the subsets of the identifiable administrative data to the Public Health of Scotland. And then within Public Health of Scotland, they have a team specialized in uh, standardizing and, uh, and create a homogeneous data uh, for those several national data sets. So a good example of those national data sets is prescription data, prescribing data. So in Scotland, the prescribing data is collected 
using the following two methods. The first method is the e-pharmacy system. Uh, this is a system we capture most of the uh, the GP prescription from the GP, basically the primary care. Um, and then we have another system called the uh, DCVP, which is uh, the system that the NHS use to calculate the payment to the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company. And this is a system we use to capture prescribing data as well. So this will cover the uh, secondary care and other sort of uh, uh, prescribing information really well. So the combination of those two systems provide a national level prescribing data uh, in Scotland. So the more detailed uh, uh, reading about the e-pharmacy system and also the DCVP in those links. Um, there is this link that I highlighted in yellow because it is absolutely important. As I listed here, those are not uh, exclusive uh, description of the national level data. We have much, much more than that. So we have a national data catalog, which is maintained by, by Public Health Scotland. Um, this is the uh, metadata uh, about the national level data. If you are curious about the Scottish national level data, please go and have a read. You have all the information available there in this link. Um, and then regional, regional level NHS data. Um, so regional Scottish safe and they receive in general two types of data. So receive a subset of the data from the national standard data sets, the SMRs prescribing data from the public health Scotland, including all these patients who are residents or receive healthcare within their relative boards. And also they have access to deeply phenotyped data, which is only captured, which is captured within their local clinical system, but not collected in a national level. So there are a lot, quite a lot of data like that. And uh, here is some examples of those data, the stroke, stroke data, the echo data, the laboratory test data. Um, each of the safe haven, they have, in terms of regional available data, it's quite different. Uh, so each of them publish their own um, sort of data catalog in their own websites. So the link is here. Um, again, I have to say, uh, the, 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 the data sets listed in those links, they are not uh, exclu exclusive description of what's available for you. If you are aware that there is this type of data sets uh, in that region that you want to use, always initialize a conversation with us. We know the right people to talk with to get the user data. We know the right way to get you the data securely available to you. So um, don't get Mis misled by by what's available there. It's, it really uh, covers not really uh, everything that we provide. Always just comment, have a conversation with us. Um, and also the research data. So the previous national level data, regional level data, they're all NHS data. Uh, so they're generated during the NHS delayed running. Uh, the initial purpose of the data is for healthcare purpose. Uh, the research using of it is called secondary uses of those data. Research data, however, is still healthcare data, but it's, uh, it's health data, but it's, uh, it's specifically collected for research purpose. So generally speaking, the research data will be uh, in a better quality uh, and it covers uh, some specific uh, information that is not available in the, in the, in the general, general NHS roaming data. So two good examples of research data is Generation Scotland. This is a, a big project has been running for uh, almost a decade. They have really, really, really good genetic data available uh, of Scottish genetic data available. And uh, we have another research data called SHARE. So this is, um, this is basically a, a register for patients. Patients could choose to register with SHARE and uh, by registering with share, that means you consent your, your bio samples to be used for research purpose. So every time you go to a hospital or GP to get your blood collected to conduct the analysis, all those blood that are collected, not necessarily they will be all used for that test. There always will be some leftovers. If you are signed up with share, that means your leftovers will not be just directly goes into the bin. It will be transported to the biomarker bank and uh, uh, 
when a research project identify you as a, one of the suitable cohort for them to conduct another research, they have the right to request your, your bio samples to be sent to them to conduct the uh, research. So uh, this, is, this is how SHARE works. It really helped quite a lot of research projects in, in, in Scotland here. It's a really, really, really good idea to do that. Um, as we talked in the previous slides, uh, laboratory test is one of the data that is not available in the, in the national level. So this is actually a, a, a ongoing, one of my ongoing research project. So uh, in this project, the ultimate goal is actually bringing Scottish laboratory data into a national level using a federation model. So why, why we start with laboratory tests? So laboratory tests that together with the prescribe being and the hospital administration are the most important uh, data sets in EHR profile. And in Scotland, prescribe being hospital administration, they are already national leveled. Uh, laboratory tests of each Scottish national uh, NHS uh, health sport, they remain separately managed in the regional safe haven. So for this project, we received uh, lab tests of the share cohort uh, of each from each of the uh, regional safe haven. Um, so this is the time coverage. This is the records that we received. This is the patient comp that we received. Um, we are currently undergoing the loading uh, governance um, and the loading data will be available for this project analysis. But the following slides will be only based on those Glasgow Dash and Hick laboratory test analysis so far. So first of all, the common tests. Um, each, of the each of the regional safe haven, they have more than like 200 different types of uh, laboratory tests conducted on, on their patients. It is, there's, there's no poss possibility that we can focus on all of them. So the very first thing we did is we find those common tests that is probably used across the region and uh, we, we focus on those. So we selected this 66 lab tests that covers quite a good range of the, the, of the laboratory data that we received. And we only focus on this 66 for now. So there are 37 of those laboratory tests actually appears in all three of this uh, regional safe haven. There are 13 laboratory tests appears in two of the safe havens, but missing in one which are the 751. And each of the safe havens, they have around five or six uh, quite biospoke uh, laboratory tests that is quite unique for their, for their region. So test the frequency. Um, from this image, you can see, generally speaking, it follows the same pattern. If this test is being widely used in one region, or uh, used in one region, then it will be used quite popular in other regions as well. And also a, a, a different pattern you observe here is uh, female patients generally compared with male patients, they have more tests conducted on them, um, but there are considerable variations in the use of laboratory tests across the NHS. For instance, you can notice this test, it not, it, it's really small number here. It's being used in, in T75, but it's really small number. But compared with other safe haven, it's really widely used in other safe haven. And also you observe difference in the in the in other tests as well. So the reasons for this variation um, uh, really can be all kinds of reasons. So the difference between populations, uh, the difference between the de depression, the difference between the disease uh, incidence, or even the local policy or the availability of that test. Uh, for that region. It, it really can be all kinds of reason. And also uh, it can be the individual requesting patterns by the doctor uh, collectively within each the health board. Um, there is one thing that also we need to point out that the variation can be caused by how the data is collected. So a good example of this, uh, the data collection procedure actually caused the variation uh, that we observe in the data pattern is we know uh, the, the blood sugar test is widely conducted in the in primary care in, in loading, but because loading's laboratory, uh, laboratory data collection 
procedure, they mainly focus on whoever uh, have encounter with the secondary care. So a lot of the patients who only have their uh, have their test in primary care, they never really encountered the secondary care. Those patients' uh, uh, blood sugar test is actually missing from the final data sets. So when you when you compare the loading data sets of the in terms of blood sugar test, uh, you will notice the, the the total count is quite small. But this difference is not because the loading conducts less of those tests. It's because the data is just not collected during the procedure of the regional safe haven collecting the lab data. Um, a data can only be shared or federated shared when it has a common structure. So this image illustrates each of the safe haven they have quite. So this is the lab data table and each of the rows is one of the columns names. So the, the table structure is quite different, but they are overlapping of the information between all the three safe havens. And uh, we developed a fire-based uh, common structure. And we sort of mapped all, this, all the data into this common structure to, to conduct further analysis uh, and also federation in these projects. So the reason that we need to actually local, localize the FIRE, FIRE is, FIRE is one of the uh, data structures that is widely used in NHS uh, England as well. So this link will provide you more information about FIRE. The reason that we need to adapt it is because we need to add these two biosport bio concepts. One is health sport, one is read code description, which provide uh, uh, more information of what is test about. Um, to the researcher. We believe that is absolutely essential. So when you bring all the data together, when you conduct some um, um, basic analysis, the very first difference that you will observe is reference range heterogeneity. So the, uh, when, you, when, you do a, when you do a laboratory test, you, the, the doctor normally recommend, okay, for you, uh, the normal range is between this. If you are above, or lower than the normal range, then that's abnormal. Then that's that's a flag need to be set up, uh, basically for that test. And for that recommended range, we call it reference range. Um, it can vary based on the demographic of that patient. For instance, as illustrated by this image, so we can see for this specific test, we can see the the reference range given. Um, is highly related with the age of that patient. When the age is 60 above, if you give zero to four as a reference range, when it's uh, 75 above, if you give zero to five as a reference range. But we do observe the, the variation between uh, intensive haven in terms of reference range. For instance, this one. For patients who is who is below 55 years old, uh, the DASH safe haven believe the reference range should be zero to 2.5, but all the other safe havens, they use zero to three as a reference range. Um, so this is example of, of, of the reference range uh, variation can be explained, but there are some reference range that the, the, the variation that we just find is, in, it can be caused by the changing of the test methods, or it can be caused by the changing, the same methods, but the changing of the acid that could cause the reference change as well. So um, we only have the data. We don't really know the, the reason behind that. Uh, we try our best to interpret, but we do have, we do have different various uh, potential reasons for this variation of reference range. When it comes to unit heterogeneity, it's good news. Uh, the unit heterogeneity is not as bad as the reference range. So there are 70, there were 32 out of the 37 common tests that appears in multiple safe havens actually have the same test unit. So there are some variations in the unit. For example, for this test, 22 of one safe havens records have this, while the, the rest of the uh, safe havens records and other safe haven have a unit of this. Again, this another test. Majority of one safe haven 
tests using this as a unit, and only two of the tests coming back using this as a unit. But the situation is totally flipped when it comes to a different regional safe haven. We see this has been mainly used as the majority, and this has been just only two of the tests coming back with this. So we would, we don't, obviously we don't really know what's, what's the reason of the using a different different unit, but we think that might be the changing of the test method um, or even the, the asset changing. And when it comes to, but when it comes to the uh, unit, uh, the unit heterogeneity can be caused by the lack of standard in data collection as well. So this is an example here for this laboratory tests. There are 40 data entries in that safe havens data have this as a unit. And obviously we, we can see this total HP is just trying to provide more information. The unit for this test should be only just 100%, which is, uh, which is the case for the rest of the data, including data for the other safe havens. So after talking about the heterogeneity of the data, and also uh, we come across with a common structure. All those, all those demonstrates the efforts that needed to bring a regional available data into a national level. But it is absolutely necessary for us to do this because it will really, really broaden our selection of the patients, and it will really. Uh, enables a cross regional cross health board um, projects for a bigger cohort, which potentially will lead to better impact in terms of research. So in order to achieve a federated way of bringing regional level data into a national level, we have proposed a framework to support the sharing and the reuse in the health data records across uh, Scottish safe havens. So this is the framework that we propose. It's, I know it's an image that's quite overwhelming. It's, it's quite, got quite a lot of things happening here. But in general, the middle bit are the individual safe havens uh, uh, data repository. And we have component A and component B, those two different approach to federate data between safe haven. So in the next two slides, I will talk uh, component A, component B in detail separately. So first of all, component A. Um, so this is, this is a, a, a data repository of the safe haven. And component A is a, is a standardized, pseudo anomalized data sets based uh, component. So we extract part of the data that we need, and we, then we transform that data into a standardized uh, common data model and also common data standard and hosting that data into uh, in a virtual machine. And then we set uh, the softwares on, on top of this virtual machine to conduct the discovery or meta-analysis. So this, this component, the benefits of this is, is a total separation between uh, between between where the internet is required and where uh, the identifiable data is stated. So in the rare situation, this system is compromised. Uh, the person who compromises it can only access to this sort of uh, standard pseudo analyzed data sets. So the data sets is de-identified uh, de anyway. So there is little chance that the uh, the, the, the patients will be re-identified because the identifiable data is in somewhere else. So because the higher secure level of this model, this, this component potentially can be directly opened to researchers. So researchers could be using those discovery tools, meta-analysis tools, directly working with those virtual machines to really conduct the analysis. The negative or the cons of this model is also the virtual machine itself. So we basically now have a duplicate of the data sets of uh, the same data in a different format in a separate space. And also this onboarding of other data sets into this virtual machine can potentially take quite a lot of resources and also maintaining the running of the virtual machine, hosting all the data in the virtual machine have potential long time cost. So this is component A and then we have component B. So component B is 
basically from here we can see this is data repository from one safe haven. This is data repository from another safe haven. We set software developed uh, de directly on the data repository and then networking through the network, network in between the data repository. So by doing this, we enable the safe haven staff to be aware of what's available in other safe haven. So when a safe haven staff conduct a cohort building, they could actually cohort building uh, on the all the data that available in all the five safe haven, other than just their local regional safe haven. So that really, really uh, enables the researcher to discover uh, what's available out there, and also uh, sort of uh, enables the researcher to utilize the data uh, in, in in a national way. But because this this model, the the, the software is directly sitting on the identifiable data. Um, so this basically means we cannot, absolutely cannot provide this, this access to researcher themselves. Only safe haven staff could access this, this network and conduct cohort building for researchers. So the, uh, the initial uh, back and forth flagging process is still required between the researcher and the safe haven um, to find the a suitable cohort for the researcher. So the the benefits of this is uh, it will be quite easy to onboard data. You, know, you don't need to transform the data. There, are, there are software is available there. It doesn't require uh, a standard common structure for the data. So you, you can just link the data uh, in its original format with the, with, with the software. Uh, the cons is, of course, a researcher will not able to access the software themselves. So in Scotland, uh, we propose uh, Within our safe haven uh, network, that we 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 try both component A and component B. Um, so we 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 push on both directions and uh, to see what what we can get um, and uh, which one is benefiting the researchers the most. So this is all I want to talk for today. I'm I'm, I'm sorry I'm I'm overrunning for two minutes <laughs> for this talk. I, I I need to acknowledge the support of the Scottish Government Chief Scientist Office and the uh, support of uh, uh, HDI UK funding. Um, thank you very much. That's all I want to talk about today. Any questions? That's that's great, Chang. Yeah. So um, um, so uh, any any. Questions, folks. I'm just trying to see if there's anything in the slides here. Um, bum, bum, bum. Oh, here's one from Simon Thompson. Trying um, says component A slides is anonymous data, uh, not a uh, not a anonymized data. So there's still a disclosure risk. Um, um, the more data sets you add, the bigger the risk. How is this risk mitigated? Is the question. So for component A, we have the options here. We can either use pseudo anonymized or totally de-identified. Um, depends on the obviously uh, on the risk model that we are going to adopt. We can we can choose to totally de-identify the, the, the data. And also in component A, uh, we are thinking of providing some uh, synthetic data. So obviously to help the researcher to get familiarized with the data structure and how the data looks like, uh, that will, so those synthetic data highly potentially will be provided to the researcher um, to, as a practice for their meta-analysis to develop their uh, pipelines and everything. Mm -hmm. um, the data is still securely hosted. The real data will be still securely hosted in the virtual machine um, unless the researcher have a full access. So we do have the honor to have Emily here. Emily is actually uh, the uh, the PI of this national level project called CoConnect. It's using component A to achieve a national level uh, COVID data. And uh, Emily could give you more details of what component A is about now. Um, yeah, so it's Simon, it's um, the 
It's pseudonymized only because of where um, the fact that uh, the people on uh, behind the firewall and uh, and everything they know what the, the the link is, so it's pseudonymous to them, but it's not pseudonymous to the outside world. So it's it's at a fully anonymous aggregate level um, when the when the queries are run. So the pseudonymous data is is not leaving, and um, it's actually fully anonymous when you actually run the queries. And you've actually added that in. I guess that slide says it's aggregate only, so that's fine. Yes, it is aggregate only. Fully anonymous. If that answers your question. Any, uh, any other questions? I'm scanning the... Oh, here's one from, let me see. Um, Archie Campbell, actually. So it says, is data held in a structured database? How do you deliver subsets to researchers? CSVs? What, what's the format? Uh, that's in terms of data format. Um, generally speaking, it's whatever format the researchers want. Uh, I will go back to the slides that here. Generally speaking, it's whatever format the researchers want, uh, but most of researchers uh, request CSV. That's just a, the standard format the researcher will request. But in Hague, we do start supporting researchers to use database format. So we will provide the data into a, a Microsoft database and researcher sort of using SQL to another it. Uh, any more? I just ask Charlie, uh, uh, Archie, what do you mean? Do you mean from component A, component B, or do you mean just generally um, the safe havens providing a database structure or CSV? Oh, there he is. Um, just a general question. Sorry, it was just a general question. Uh, it's just when I, I was working on the Hex Safe Haven a while ago and using a SQL Server instance, but I seem to recall that hardly anybody seemed to be actually using it other than me. Yeah, yeah, we, we do find we do find that a lot of people just want to use CSV files mainly because yeah. they just um, are used to uploading those straight into Stata or R or whatever. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're quite happy in um, in that format. I think we're finding as as kind of um, uh, the research community evolves and you get more sort of bio bioinformaticians in there and other people who are kind of from less, I suppose, standard epidemiology um, backgrounds. You, we tend to get more people wanting other other tools uh, and other yeah. kind of pipelines, you know, like for, for AI development yeah. and all of those sorts of things. If, if you could give access directly to, say, a view of the database tables, then that would be, that wouldn't be a frozen snapshot. It would be more up-to-date data as the data becomes updated. Um, yes, you could. Are we now on to component A, component B? Um, I can't remember what that, <laughs> what that definition was. Um, just so, just in so, general, just whether, whether or not you have a snapshot as whenever that release is made, or whether you can then, if it's made, might, might take you months to get your thing worked out, in which case there could be six months more data. Yeah, so the idea, idea with the, the idea with the pipeline for the Federation stuff is that as the databases underneath change, you have an automated pipeline to update the um, pseudonymized database, which means it's, 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 it's kept in sync, basically, and so mm -hmm. the, the, the pipeline is, is, um, is automated in that way. Mm -hmm. So, so the, it should be... the Federation model that we're showing here, it's, it's, it's in going in parallel with our metadata work. So uh, I would assume the, 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 the table columns, names and stuff, that will be in the metadata. So we, we, uh, just like the HDI UK metadata portal, we, 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 we do support that work as well. So we are working with HDI UK and also with Data Scotland um, to try to, try to uh, share our metadata in a standard format with the researcher to help them to understand what's available in each table. So uh, any further questions? I'm keeping an eye on time. Anybody else want to ask anything? Any more questions going, going? I'll go for another one. Oh, there we go. Oh, just, there you go. Yeah. I, once, once okay, you, just you get to the about the share, the share sample diversion. I don't know if it's actually active in many areas just now. It, it is. It's, it's actually getting bigger. That share cohort is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It started in uh, in in Tesla and five. It's actually uh, 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 started in now else. Is that right, Emily? And then uh, it, it's getting bigger and bigger. More and more people are registered with it. If you go to, I can't really. Yeah, tell no, you. I don't mean. I don't mean people registered. I mean the actual diversion of samples. 
the samples being kept in another freezer for later use and then are those, are those <laughs> samples actually been then used by anybody yet yes, last so i heard we, they hadn't we, actually started doing it in lothian for example there was they've been talking about it for years but i hadn't got do, it started so i i'm actually working on a different project and that project is using the share cohorts blood sample to conduct some biomarker analysis yeah. And uh, uh, it's 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 definitely available there for you to mm -hmm. to obtain. And uh, you have um, our experience with with share is uh, sometimes they see uh, for this patient on this date this blood sample is available. But when you request it, what the blood sample that they give back to you can be quite different. So the the, the date yeah. might be different, but there are definitely samples available for that patients. Yeah. So. Uh, just on the question of share, if they've got a quarter of a million people and you had lab test data, you only had lab test data of about maybe 100,000 people. It seemed like only about half of them, roughly. Uh, are you talking about the lab data yeah. here? Yeah, it's because it's because of when we took the original lab data and the fact that we're missing um, uh, we're missing some data from um, from Lothian at the moment. Um, mm. So we have a it, it's it's been quite yeah. A, I thought it uh, could just be date date ranges and areas covered. Yeah, it's just, exactly. Just so the time didn't look as big as, it, as, as it will be. It will be bigger eventually. But in in answer to your question about genotyping the the sh share. Um, it's being cobbled together by lots of different grants that are paying for a proportion of it to be to be genotyped. Um, and so um, so over the years, there's been various different assays funded by different bits, which have funded the, the, the genotype of it, uh, genotyping of it. Um, and I know that they're still trying to get, they're trying to get some additional funding for genotyping some of the more recent samples. Mm -hmm. Good. So- um, uh, But I they're think... slowly churning through it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So I think I think we're just about out of time. Just to, just to let, in case you haven't noticed in the chat, um, there is a link to register for the next one of these seminars, which is on the first of December at four p.m. It will be Stefan uh, Peterson talking about AI for advanced cardio MRI analysis. Um, so that's one that you can pick up from the chat um, if you like. Um, so I think that that ends the seminar uh, for for today. Thanks, Chang, for that. That's that's the that that's the most comprehensive overview of um, of the safe haven activity that I've, I've seen actually. So that was very useful. So thanks very much, Chang, and thanks very much, folks, for turning up. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.